just love the way that teenagers have this like sense of what's right and wrong. I believe we are born with this sense of justice and injustice and what's fair and what's truth and this like searching for truth. I mean, I'm, I teach philosophy and religion, so I'm very passionate about that. And I just love hearing them debating it and they might have a really strong view about something and I'm like, okay, well, what's your evidence? Oh, okay, and just, I'm not trying to change their mind. I just want to help them argue it better. Kiala originally was envisaged as how do you make public discourse, and particularly online discourse, much more cohesive, much more resolution focused, much more engaged around bringing people together as opposed to driving people apart. Kiala comes from a place of wanting to really foster much more rational, constructive discussion and engagement, and the classroom is just one big part of that. Critical thinking is a fundamental aspect of our educational outcomes. What we're not so clear about is what it is and how best to teach it. For most ways of interpreting critical thinking, we do appreciate the central role of argumentation and particularly within that, the giving and taking of reasons. A critical thinker, first and foremost, is critical about their own thinking. They are evaluative about their own thinking. And that's a far more complex project than simply teaching students facts and figures. It is teaching them not just to process that information and to use it, but it's teaching them how to make it meaningful and it's teaching them how to work collaboratively. There's a very important social aspect to critical thinking. And that's, I think, something that we often overlook in our educational contexts. I work remotely with students and so I use Kialo with them. It means that they can be joining a debate that way on their computers. So students will join and then we'll go through some content and there'll be something from that, maybe a question I've said that could come up or a topic which I pick up from them as something they'd really like to debate more or they say, oh, can we do that one? And then from that I go on Kialo and set up a debate, which I really love that it's quite simple to just sort of quickly set up a debate, send them the link and then we debate that way. I share my screen, I might share what I'm typing to sort of model how I use it or I might share particular answers I think are really good. But something I love showing is the sort of diagram, the kind of map of how the debate's happening because my subject really just studies and philosophy can be quite hard to sort of see physically and that shows where it's going and where the argument's swaying and that's something you can't really do super easily so I use it for that. Ultimately what Kialo is, is a site that lets students break down their discourse into pros and cons. So arguments in favour and arguments against, and really pit those against each other very directly, but also find ways to add support to what it is that they're writing and explaining. And that is at the core of critical thinking. It's that ability to have an idea or to have a thought or have an opinion about the world and test it to come up with reasons why it might not be true, to engage with reasons why other people think it isn't true, to find reasons to back it up and give explanation, to give evidence, and to really demonstrate why it is that you hold that belief. I think that students are very easily drawn into the Kiao environment. The students can sort of just slide into it, but for teachers it can be an absolute revelation that here is a way where we can actually put our thinking up on a screen that everybody can look at. Many teachers really like working with students' thinking, but they're so pressured to get through a content-heavy curriculum that they lose the abilities and the opportunities to really engage in thinking. And this is what Kiala can give them, a really easy, quick and manageable way to engage in thinking that's not only visible, but it's actually recordable. So you can actually have a record of how students have been thinking and the quality of their thinking. They love it because it might be students who might not be the first to put their hand up in a debate in class and yet they can sort of take their time and write something. Even in the classroom if you just said okay what do you think about this you're only going to hear from one student at a time and one thing I also love is that you'll have different arguments going off at the same time and when you go back to that kind of colour map that I use all the time you'll see that whilst you've been busy over here doing something over there you've got three students going off in an argument and it just gives them that freedom that they might not have in the classroom. I think our students, they're interested in that and they want to argue about things and discuss it. A platform like Kialo kind of gives it that structure. It's always really exciting to talk to our educators about the ways in which they're using it because it is so different. We've got educators who are using it for teaching students the basics of writing a really good essay. We've got teachers who are working in classrooms where the majority of students don't speak English fluently and part of what they're doing is training students to engage and to express themselves in a language that isn't familiar. We've got teachers using it to have really free-flowing classroom discussions. I know the students find it useful because they've asked me and said, Oh, uh, have you got the link to that debate we did miss? 
is something I'm very passionate about, that everybody has that opportunity to debate their views and points and just kind of look at things from different sides and assess what their position is and why and have that chance to sort of think critically. And anything that encourages that, I think, is just really essential for society and for education.